Uh, yesterday we did go over some topics and today we wanted to continue with our series. So if you missed yesterday, you're going to want to go back and check it out. But I'm Davina. And I'm Holbert. We moved to the Philippines like 90 days ago, ish. 90 days ish. Yeah. And so uh, we did a lot of planning prior to moving out here. And uh, since we've been here, we've realized there are a lot of things that we could have done differently or that we could kind of like share with you guys so we can kind of impart our knowledge. Yeah. So that way you don't have to suffer like we did. Yeah. Uh, I would like to apologize ahead of time. They are doing construction. Right, no, right, us. right behind us. Yeah. So if you hear grinding and, and loud banging noises, we hate it. Apologize. We hate it too. <laughs> um, ahead of time. And so, okay. And so if you want to watch the where, where we talked about like what we would do differently and how to prepare, uh, the series was we did that yesterday on our live yesterday. So today we're continuing on that aspect. And I think we left off with banking. Yeah, we were talking about banking yesterday. So I was talking about. Uh, Philippine National Bank, um, but if you want to, like, on, on how useful it has been for large transactions for us, um, but I think you wanted to add Charles Schwab into that mix. So I am a big, like, I love Charles Schwab, and, like, Charles Schwab could do no wrong, but here, BDO and Charles Schwab do not communicate. So any, like, BDO is the biggest bank in the Philippines, and you're going to see BDO for a lot of things, like an ATM, if you go try to use your your Charles Schwab at an ATM for BDO, it's just not going to work. But the good thing is, is that wherever there's one ATM, there's usually like five or six different ATMs all lined up together. And you can usually find an ATM that will accommodate your Charles Schwab. So I, the only problem I have with Charles Schwab is the BDO system. Now, BDO is also used for like when they do the Maya charge, any kind of international charging, and you can use your credit cards. Uh, so don't don't feel like you can't use your credit cards in, here in the Philippines. The only problem we have is that most everything is like cash. So it's a definitely Philippines is a, still a predominantly cash society. You will go to carenderias, you will go to stores. And they won't have a credit card machine to Reader. transact yeah. and to do transactions with credit cards. They even won't have like large change. And so like even uh, a thousand peso, which is like 20 bucks US or it's actually like $18, right? Depending on the uh, exchange rate. So they don't even have change for a thousand peso. Like you're going to end up seeing them going and asking around and trying to scrounge up the change for that big of a bill. Uh, most of the time, it's good to have 500s or less, and even 500 can be a, like a like an issue trying to get change for. Yeah, there are some bills out here that are uh, kind of like um, not seen very often. It's the 200 piece bill. It's a green bill that is kind of like. It's kind of it's kind of like one of those things like you saw a Pikachu or something. You're like, oh, hey, what was that? <laughs> so anyway. All right. So uh, since uh, you're a Charles Schwab, uh, what do you like about Charles Schwab? And I think, and I think talking about that will let the viewers know why you think it's important. Well, Charles Schwab is a, it's like all online. There's no actual like tellers or anything like that. So you have to like send your money electronically to Charles Schwab, and they don't have any because there's no tellers and you know. You can get all your transaction uh, fees. There's no transaction fee. Everything is covered that way. But also, like, if you do an ATM withdrawal or something, what they do is uh, they give you back your money. So whatever the bank out here is charging you 18 peso for, you know, getting money out. Um, it's 250. Yeah. So it might be, like, 250 and it might be, like, 18 peso, like, that your bank does or that, you know, um, here, Charles Schwab will give you back the money that, that you use for a fee. And so at the end of the month, you get like a nice chunk of change. Like um, I usually get like $45 uh, returned on my account. Yeah. So, so I like that. So it's not bad. Charles Schwab is actually good. What else? 
I mean, they also have, it's like a brokerage account. So if you wanted to, you could save money that way, you know, buy stocks and, um, you know, do some, some kind of equities and whatnot. And so it's, it's, it's cool because you kind of like dabble in that as well. So what else, what else do you like about it? Yeah. Uh, Before I talk about my favorite. Okay. Talk about your favorite. Okay. So she's missing a lot. Um, so not only do they do refunds, right? Uh, a lot of times when you do traveling, right, there's foreign transaction fee. And Charles Schwab does not have any foreign transaction fee at all. I thought I said that. Oh, you did? Yeah. Uh, must have been yawning. Uh, <laughs> sorry. So no foreign transaction fee. And then something else too. Yeah, so the refund, no, no foreign transaction fee. And it's taken everywhere except BDO for whatever reason. I think BDO just doesn't like Charles Schwab. But um, Land Bank, right? Uh, RC, China, Bank. R, China Bank, RCBC, all the other banks take it. Hey, I will give you guys like a little tip though. Um, you might use a, a ATM here and the next day you might get a, um, a text message that your account has been uh, compromised but it's actually a phishing scam. And so they probably get the information like your telephone number off your card or something from the skin, like the skimmer or the reader. But like we were getting, like anytime I use like a new ATM or, or a specific ATM in the area, I, I get a, a phishing scam. So don't answer any text messages that you get on your phone about your bank. Those aren't real. Um, I've literally like called my bank, um, talked to them. I don't push on the link that says call this number to rectify this. Like, no, those are all lies. So just just be aware that scams like that are happening out here in Philippines and we've had them happen to us. Okay. So my turn. My next favorite, the next thing that we use, like probably more than Charles Schwab, I would say is our Apple card. So your Apple card, it, Apple card is by Golden Sachs. It's titanium. She has it's one. It's a MasterCard. It's a MasterCard. She has one and I have one, right? So if one of our cards were ever compromised, her Charles Schwab, whatever other credit cards you use, my, uh, my Apple card, uh, it's good to go. So the beautiful thing about the Apple card is that when they send it to you, the only thing that's on the card that identifies who you are is your name. It doesn't have the expiration date. It doesn't have numbers. the account number. It doesn't have like the CCV number nothing. in the back. It has nothing. So we, and the thing is, it's it's metal. It's it's a piece of metal. So when they you hand it to people, they're like, oh, 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 oh. they yeah. so they they look for it. And they've never and seen they've this never card seen before. this card before. So when they look for it, they're like, hey, uh, what's the where's the number? What's where's the number? And so you can either give it to them or they slide the card and then they can figure it out. We force them to slide the, the card so that way they can pull the number off of the system. There's a um, lot of anonymity with that card mm -hmm. because um, they they write your numbers down. So like if you have a card that has numbers, they're gonna sit there and they're gonna put it into a log or a book. Yes. And I can't feel like, I, I don't feel comfortable with my number being in some kind of log. And something else too, is that when you use your Apple card and they do transactions, how they swipe the card is not gonna, the, the number that shows up when they swipe the card is not the same number as your, as your account. Like the last few digits of the account number totally is, is, is totally different. So Apple, right, protects, protects your privacy apple protects your account number mm -hmm. apple protects your cvv code unless you want to pull it out of your phone but unfortunately you need to have an iphone you do have to have an iphone in order for you to apply for this card. which will mean that you also need to like keep keep some things like like our iphones we keep our um our t-mobile we have t-mobile we have the magnum what is it like the magenta plan and we, we do keep our American line, phone line. Which is good because that you need it for um, two-factor authentication. Right. Yes. And then um, even if you decided to change your two-factor to like email or something, for us, having that 
that U.S. line is actually very convenient, and um, it's for us, it's worth like paying the extra bill to have. Mm -hmm. It is, and um, not just that too, but our kids have Apple watches um, that they carry with them, and I can always track where they're at. So if they have, if my kids ever leave the school, I'm like, mm, that's fishy. I I know exactly where they're at. Yeah. Um, not just that too, but yeah, there's. They, there's also the the Apple Air Tags, but mm. let's not get into that, okay? Because we're we're definitely in the Apple ecosystem. Yeah. Um, some people might not like it, but I'll tell you, it's pretty. It's got a lot of benefits. It's got a lot of benefits as far as security and, and privacy. Tap, tap doesn't always work here. They want the hard card. Yeah, but when they it does work, everybody's like, oh, you're using tap through yeah. your phone. Yeah, they're really, or through your watch. Oh, your oh my watch? God, you're having a conversation with your watch? Like, I've, I've been stopped and asked about, like, how do how am I talking to my family member through my watch? Like, yeah, yeah so the technology isn't here yet. Um, and, and it, well, at least it's not in the province, right? right. So Apple Card, uh, please, you know, get a, get an Apple phone. I can guarantee it, right? It is good. No transaction fee. Okay. He said yeah. Apple phone, but Apple, Apple card. Yeah, he Apple card. That. So no transaction fee, and then you get a, a, a big discount when you, whenever you buy Apple products with your Apple card. Um, it is secure, privacy. It doesn't have all the information that's shown. So even if they take a picture of your Apple card, the only thing that they're taking a picture of is your name. Nothing else. So it's just like your name in the front. The Apple logo, and in the back says Goldman Sachs and Mastercard. So, but for the most part, that is it. Yeah. Um, what did I talk about? Um, I was gonna say if I can talk about American Express. Ah, yeah, go ahead. So American Express is also taken here at most big retailers. So, um, we never have an issue like putting things on a card if we're at like a big department store. But if you're not, you're probably going to have to use cash. Yeah. Like, we paid cash for the motorcycle. They weren't going to let us put it on the credit card. Yeah. So I just want to let you guys know those are three big things. American Express, right, standalone. If you're going to get a Visa card, get Charles Schwab, and then you're going to need um, Apple Card, right? So the Apple Card, so all these things have uh, no foreign transaction fees. The uh, you get percentage back from Charles Schwab, or oh, not percentage back, you get percentage off if you purchase with your Apple card an Apple uh, item or product. The Charles Schwab, there is no foreign transaction fee and there's no ATM fees. And then the um, Hilton is you know, it's just to have it, yeah. just like a, as a backup, yeah. And then the um, the prepaid. Gcash is basically like a prepaid credit card. credit card. You know, you put money, you put load, you load the money onto the card, and then you can use it to, it's like a, a credit card, but it's not. And so if you are struggling, like, and all you, and you want to put money onto um, a credit card or to Gcash so you can pay your bills, because Gcash is pretty much accepted everywhere. So... I mean, there's times when we've gone to buy things and we can't buy them because they don't take international. And and then we're like, okay, well, then we don't need it. <laughs> we'll walk away. Um, and I mean, that's a good way to help us not spend money. But <laughs> yeah, sometimes they don't take international cards altogether. Yeah, sometimes they don't, and it's okay. That's fine. You just go to an ATM, pull the money, uh, the amount of money that you need. If you really wanted it. And sometimes they'll be like, uh. It's not even that worth it. I'm not going to. What have you walked away from? A drone. We were, like, trying to get a drone. A drone, like, handling, I don't know. The remote with the screen. And so they didn't take international, so we walked away. They walked away. They're like, oh, we only take this. We're like, oh, okay. All right, sounds good. And then we're walking away. They're like, oh, but you can use cat. I was like, sorry, man. You, you don't take my car. It's like, I'm trying to give you money, and you don't want to take it. Not my problem. You know, it's all right. I'll find somebody <laughs> and else. we don't really need it. You know? Yeah, we ended so. up not needing it. We still don't have that drone thing. No. Um, okay. So we talked about banking for the most part. And we talked about the type of credit cards you should use. Okay. Some people, right, might think that, do you need cash to travel with when you go to Philippines? 
Um, okay, so let me talk to you about that. So in my opinion, I think it's good to have a little bit of Filipino cash on you when you first land. It's good to have it, but if you don't, you can get it at the airport. Um, they'll take they'll take you they'll take an arm and a leg from you though. Don't don't leave the airport without going to an ATM and getting that money because you can pretty much get it out of an ATM instead of going to like one of those exchange cash exchange things. Um, you really don't need U.S. dollar or um, like any any dollar when you're coming here. If you have your Charles Schwab, you can keep all your money in a bank account. And when you fly, you can fly peace of mind, knowing that you're not going to get robbed of your money, you know, your wads of cash. Um, and the reason I say that is, uh, well, look, if you're planning on buying a motorcycle in that first week, sure, bring a thousand uh, dollars and, and change it out, sure. But if you can, like, just go to the ATM and pull the money you need and just keep pulling it for a couple days to, because you're going to reach your maximum, um, and so do something like that because it's not worth it to walk like to travel with large sums of money um it's really hard like to put it's a it lot in of anywhere. bills it's a lot of bills yeah and then when you go to exchange it they want you to write down per serial number for each bill <laughs> right. and so it just gets a little cumbersome and it actually is like it's like everybody's watching you as you're turning in your american yeah, yeah, yeah. dollars or whatever even euros i i turned in some euros that i had laying around um and and it and they want a lot of information i mean when you're going to exchange money they want your passport. They want to know where you're staying. They want your phone number. It's just like way too much data. Like uh, I, I hate to give that much information to anybody um, so that I can switch money around. It just makes me feel really uncomfortable having all my personal identifiable information out in some database. Yeah. So is it worth it? Not really. Um, I think that you could just do all your transactions uh, through banks and businesses like uh, Charles Schwab and then just go to the ATM. It's much safer. Question. Can you bring Filipino money? Yeah, you can bring Filipino Philippines money. And how is that process? So there's a maximum of 50,000 peso that you can travel with. Per 50, person. 50,000 peso is like... 500 bucks. No, no. No, it's a thousand. It's a thousand. It's, it's like 900 It's like less than a thousand. It's like 800 yeah, it's $900. bucks. $900. So the most you can travel into the Philippines and even exiting the Philippines, if you were going to take out more than 50 peso, you could be stopped by customs. You need to um, get that approved through customs. And so like, it's just the same as like if you were flying with 10,000 US dollar, right? Um, you're not supposed to, to fly with more than that denomination um, globally. Yeah. So if so, you do and you get caught with it, they can confiscate it. Yeah, and then you're you're asked out. So uh, we did we did that. We we did we travel, did travel with, with Filipino, Filipino peso. With, with peso. How we did it is we went to Wells Fargo, and because we bank with Wells Fargo, you can go on the app. In their application, you can go um, like order uh, foreign foreign money, and you can order it. it. Comes right to your your doorstep as long as it's under a certain amount of money. And since eight hundred dollars is is not a lot in U.S., um, as long as you don't go over like two thousand U.S. dollars, then you can get it at home um, by the mailman. So yeah. that's that's kind of what we did. So yeah, we carried we we got here with um, Philippine peso, and so the first few weeks that's what we used until we learned where the ATMs were, where we learned where our bank was, and so once we knew all of that stuff, it was pointless to have all that cash. So now you know, I mean, but did we use it? Was it was it useful to bring peso out here? Yeah. 100%. It was. 100%. Because it allowed us to conduct transactions. And it right? also Large us... transactions in a short period that we were here. But Three it, days. 
but it also helped us like become familiar with the bills because like I've been scammed in China by like with my change where they gave me bills that were no longer in circulation. And so when we, so it's like nice to like be able to see the bill, understand it, touch it. Um, and then kind of like figure out how, like how much it's worth, you know, um, in USD. So yeah, that's, that's a good, I don't know. I think it's good to be able to see the money. Yeah. So be familiar with it. Cause I'm like, Whoa, the hundred and the thousand look the same color wise, similar. similar oh yeah. Similar. One's purple and one's blue. Yeah. They I'm like, Whoa, similar, Whoa. So you like, yeah. you pull it out, like you pull out a wad and you're like, Oh, okay. That's it. You might be giving a thousand away instead of a hundred. So just be caught, be, be cognizant of that. And so, um, what did we use? I so think we, the fifties and the twenties look really close. That's true. Yeah. It's like, yeah. um, it's like orange and red. Yes. And so, so what do we use, right? The first three days uh, we were here, we bought a motorcycle and we used the funds that we pulled, that we brought, PISO that we brought from the United States to purchase that motorcycle. Because honestly, it's going to take you some time. If you don't have a ride, mm. how are you going to know where the ATMs are? And, how are you going to know and, where and, Yeah, how are you going to know where anything is? And so we kind of like begged, borrowed, pleaded. We did. Uh, we, we did. We did. Card. And so, you know, shout out to family members, yeah. right? Um, Manang Lerma. Um, for up. hooking it up. I was we would be like, hey Mana, can we borrow? Can we your borrow? Car. Can we borrow your car? <laughs> and so they did. They allowed us to kind of borrow their vehicles. That's how we got around. That's how we were able to go to dealerships and purchase our own vehicle. Now we're we're good. Now we are like a 100 percent But initially, what did we use? We got a ride in a tricycle. Yeah. Right. And uh, we went to Tayo, got the motorcycle. And then yeah. so we rode around. Oh, in we ride into the motorcycle like far away, mm -hmm. two 15 yeah, minute yeah, rides. Yeah, yeah. And that's actually really hard on your body. And, and then it's rainy. That, the thing is, too, is like without the, the license plate on your on the motorcycle, I was I didn't want to go anywhere. So I'm like, I don't want to get pulled over. I don't want right. my, my only mode of transportation to be impounded, you know, yeah, and I'm like, no. You. They say, oh, you can't drive your motorcycle until it's registered. And you're like, what? Well, but I just bought it. Like, how can I not drive it? Yeah. yeah. So now we have the registration paperwork. Now we have a picture, an email that says it's registered through the land transportation office. So that's great. But just know it is uh, good for you to have around cash. Just make sure it's not per person, no more than 50,000 pesos. I think you should share the 50,000 peso or we at least yeah we don't much. need that much i mean cuz uh one i think the lowest the, the the lowest or highest the lowest highest cap is rcbc which is 10,000 mm -hmm. peso yeah. and in china bank you can pull 20,000 in one transaction so that's a yeah. lot of money that's a lot of money yeah 20,000 you're running around with 400 bucks in your hand and it's actually are it's considered a lot of like, that's a, that's a monthly wage for a teacher so yeah, that's a lot of money it's a wad it's a, mm. it's a wad of cash and it so. is a wad of cash <laughs> <laughs> so you're lucky if the atm that you go to has one thousands like and it's new bills and it's new bills but if it's like 500s yeah you're walking around when you pull 20 grand out you're walking around with a lot of cash the atms only spit out 500 and, and one thousands <laughs> yes yeah 500s and one thousands so it. Um, I don't know, were there, the disadvantages of having cash with you at the airport is the worry that's like, uh, lots of anxiety, uh, that gonna you're going to get, get robbed. robbed, you've heard right all now. the stories, yeah. you know, you've seen the videos where they're looking through your bags and they're putting money in their pocket. Like we did do a lot of research on all the bad things that could happen. Did any of that stuff happen to us? No. no. Are we saying that it can't happen to you? It could happen. It could happen, definitely. But we were extra cautious when we were dealing, uh, we're going to the airport. What is that? So here's a $20, like a 20 peso, right? And these are the ones that are most worn out. When you get them, like they're super worn out. They feel like they're going to fall apart. This is a 50. And the interesting thing is, is that 20s, they also come in coins. So you can get, you could be having like a coin that looks like this. And this is a 20. Has like a gold perimeter. 
Okay, so these two are the same. Then you have a 50. There's no coins for 50. Um, look at this 20. This 20 is like all worn out. Yeah, I am always having like worn out 20s. I haven't had any nice ones. But this one is old, but the thousands? Hey, let me get you. I, I'm not even one carrying of the, one, of, one of the features of the thousands is that the current sitting president, all right, actually signs has their signature yeah, so that's pretty cool. so rodrigo duterte the previous uh <laughs> administration yeah. i was like what i gotta build it with his name on it so yeah. i'm like i'm saving that one thousand bill and i'm like nah bill. i'm gonna save this bill because it's got duterte on it he likes and the then yeah I, I like i like that i mean i have one with uh, with the current sitting president marcos but eh, he's gonna be president for for a few more years so, so you know this, it'd be good here this is a this is a one so it has like one okay and then um there's newer ones but those are the old piece so this is a oh here's a new one so you can kind of see the difference and they're both in circulation so this one has a one you see it? it's kind of like i don't know if you can see how different it is or what what they're a little bit bigger in in diameter um okay so you got the five piso which is like a gold one this is old and it's still in circulation then you have this five which is newer there's also another five that has like little rivets around it, it looks like a like a flower and it's also a five piso and then you're gonna run into did i show you yeah i showed you these so those are pretty much it for the peso, right? But you're going to run into like smaller denomination, which are like quarters. And the quarters are not even used anymore. So like, let's say you go to the, um, to the store and it like the price at the end is like um, 13 peso, 89 cents, right? Um, they're not even using cents anymore. So basically, if it's above a certain amount, they'll just give you that extra peso. Usually the store will eat the change that they're missing. Um, but if it's under a certain amount, you eat it. And a lot of times um, we end up having to eat the change, like get under changed because it's like a smaller store and they don't they don't honor the like will give you more like you know the bigger department stores will um give you the right change and they even have signs that say um like we we give exact change so there must have been some kind of like issue back in the day with people getting shorted one thing that happens at my kids school is like they won't get change they'll just give them extra things to buy they're like oh you know here let me add in some candy that's your change so you know it's kind of like oh man yeah anyways we talked about the money so okay what's next um, so moving to philippines I, we kind of went um off on yeah that. we kind of went off on that but i think it's good information to know um saving money how much money should you save before you come to the philippines okay that all depends right so if you're a passport sister <laughs> Or a uh, if you're a passport sister or a passport brother and you're only going to be here for two weeks, a month, or until you find your loved one, um, then, you know, you, you don't need that much as long as you have a, a good stream of income, right? Like, you know, what is enough? So for us, a family of four, uh, we're not paying rent. So with our utilities, uh, with our fuel, uh, our food on a daily basis, we spent what six hundred dollars on a monthly basis yeah, right about about but if we had to pay for rent then we would add more to that but right and but we we're in the province talk about our car we didn't talk about any kind of like um going out to like sm mall mm -hmm. and having our kids play at the uh, play center right but the thing is that could be off-centered if you're by yourself you know as a just by yourself kind of like backpacking or whatever because that's that's for four of us so right. and if you're just getting here and you're just backpacking the cheapest house that we found that you can rent or a studio is four thousand five hundred that's that's 80 bucks right 80 90 yeah that's pretty inexpensive i i watch a lot of youtubers um that are in the philippines and one guy 
I'm not going to drop a name drop because I don't do that. But one guy was saying he pays 500 peso or 500 US dollar, I believe, for two places. And so he has two residences. One's on uh, Barakai Island and the other one is in like Makati. And so he lives in the city and on like the best island in the Philippines, you know, for tourism. And he pays 500 bucks a month. That's just on his rent. Yeah. So for us, how does that correlate to you guys and what you guys need to do? It just depends on what you need. Your passport, bro. Hey, you know what? You're just going to be living off of, uh, you know, one, one studio or you're going to be living in a hotel. Okay. But don't stay in a hotel because that's that gets too expensive. You can probably get a condo. You can, you can probably get a condo, right? And it's already going to be, you know, fully furnished and things like that. It depends on where you want to go. So, but in the province prices, it's going to be a lot cheaper. Um so if you are by yourself, probably in the province and you're a foreigner, you're probably going to be spending the same amount that we are spending yeah. with, with a family of four. But granted, we do have um, established like a family home, you know, th those yeah. things are not. We, we have a social network. Yeah, we do have a social so network. So when we need help or we need something, our family is there to help us. Mm -hmm. So how much to save? That's all, all up to you. If you are a family, okay, so for we talked about passport bros already, all right? If you're, you're staying here long term, okay, you're staying here long term. But if you are having plan to stay here for long term and you have um, a family with you or you have, uh, you know, you married a Filipina or, you know, whatever, right? You are Filipino yourself that haven't returned because your parents have decided that, you know what, um, they're not going to return here and they're not going to, for whatever reason, um, you might want to save a little bit of money. Uh, and so like the first two months we spent 12 K $12,000, just getting the house renovated, getting the windows done, getting all these things. So $12,000 is a lot of money here in Philippines. Uh, that's not even, that's not even including, uh, the, the SUV that we purchased. So yeah. And you never know about healthcare either. Like what if you have medical um, things and you might have to go to the hospital. So you do want to have a little bit of like a cushion for if something like that were to come up, like let's say you got in a motorcycle accident. Now your knees banged up. You got to pay for your hospital bill. Yeah. That's another thing too. So if you're a passport bro, that's age 65. You might want to stay in your hospital. If you're a passport bro, <laughs> that's age 25, then, you know, the hospital might not be at your top priority. Okay. So if you are a family, let's go back. If you are a family and let's say just like us, we have two kids uh, and you're planning to live in a province, there are things that you can do to prepare before you actually get here. I said at the very beginning, not this one, hey, there it is, not this uh, live, but the previous live, right? The part one of this live, I said that you can come to Philippines and visit where you want to go first. And a lot of things can come out from that. When you come to vis uh, visit Philippines and you, um, you know, know where you want to go, then buy some land there, or have your Filipino spouse purchase the land there. Or if you're if you are Filipino and you have family in Philippines, have them buy that per that land, right? And then what you need to do is kind of like see or talk to an engineer, like a civil engineer, and see if they can draw up uh, like some some sketches for your house that when you get here, right? And then it's going to take them about, you know, six months to a year to build that property. So if your timeline is between, you know, a year to two years, I would encourage you to do that. Start building. Start building the property still while you're States. still in the States. Now, things that are prioritized to you, things that you want to prioritize is up to you. If you have kids, and you want to send your kids to a private school, well, make sure you visit the private school. If you have kids and you want to send to public school, make sure that what the, how the property that you want to build is going to be near a public school. So it's all, if you want to live in a city, you know, that's not going to be an issue because you're going to be living in a condo. But if you want to, if you have the money, right, and you can swing it, purchase a house. How much does it cost? California, dude, houses are like between... 750 to 1 million dollars and that's like a shack okay near the water near the beach it's like a house from the 80s but yeah <laughs> here here all right you can stand the house up for 40k mm -hmm. and it's a nice house yeah that is 2 million peso 2 with 2 million peso 
you can buy uh, the land for cheap and then build the house on it. It won't be a big, you know, seven uh, seven bedroom house. Mansion. Yeah, but it's going to be a one to two bedroom uh, or maybe three bedroom. So as each each time that you save, you know, money and send it to Philippines to build that house, you'll be better off. And um, basically having that set, that house already before in place before you come here is going to help you a lot. How has it helped us? I mean, well, I think that um, if you have your earning power still while you're in the States and you're sending money uh, to build your home and you need to make sure that it's actually getting built, you need to have like, um, you need to have some kind of like manager or foreman or family member or somebody to continue to push the project here on the side because it could easily become that you're building somebody else's house and when you get to Philippines, it's not even your home that's yeah. built. So don't get frauded. Don't be a yeah. don't be a passport bro through the internet and all of a sudden some some someone over here promises you the house is being built. Oh, it's so nice. Go thank see you so it much. Yourself. And then you get here and somebody else is living in it. Not just somebody, but you know, your your whatever who you're supposed to be getting married to brought in their boyfriend or girlfriend. Their husband. And then not just their husband, but their family too with that. And it's just like uh and you can't, okay. even, get and you can't even get them out. Yeah. So just what? be careful with so that. So as as a like foreigner, you if you're not Filipino citizen, you can buy a condo. But with that condo, you're also gonna have like a fee that you have to pay forever, which is like HOA fee for that building, which is fine. You know, it's like yeah, and, and the, the thing is, the condo's yours. yeah, you cannot buy land, but you can buy the building that's on top of it. Mm -hmm. So you have to lease the land that's underneath it. Right. So that's okay, how, that's, that's how, how yeah, it. that's how they do it. Uh -huh. um, so you can buy the condo. Like, for example, you know, you talk to a Filipino and be like, hey, man, let me lease that land off of you. I think they do leases for 25 to 50 years mm -hmm. and you can build whatever you want on top of it and they can't really touch you. Um, so what else? Something else to uh, to prepare. Why why a house? Why why would you want to build a house? Well, just because you have that earning power while you're still in the states, and once you get here, your earning power really goes like it diminishes down to a fixed income, um, and and no income if all you did was save. Now that brings us to like our next big topic, which is. If you're planning to work online, you should set all that up before you even come here. Get all um, that established. Yeah, because you'll find that you want to make all your interviews before you get out here, that you are okay, like the, the company's okay with you moving overseas. Because sometimes companies won't take you just because you don't live within the, the United States. Um, for instance, I wanted to see about becoming a professor or even studying at a specific um, college. And the college said that I have to live in the United States. So then that wouldn't be a good fit for me, especially since I live overseas. But um, so you wanna look at the fine print and you could be a professor if you have a degree, you could be a professor online. Um, some people teach English online. Some people have the idea that they wanna be a, a YouTuber and that you might be successful with that. Who knows? 90 days later, we're still kind of like- uh, We still haven't, <laughs> you know, like made any real money. I would have no check. <laughs> no but check, no check one, from YouTube. one of these days, you know, <laughs> it'll happen, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, definitely. We're uh, <laughs> underwater with the YouTube. YouTube yeah. hasn't hasn't been fruitful yet. No, not yet. But you know, <laughs> one can hope. I mean, what else are we gonna do with our time since we're retired? Yeah, we ain't doing nothing. We ain't doing nothing else. Might we ain't doing nothing else. Might as well talk, to you, might talk to you guys. Yeah. But uh, let me see. Okay, what else? What's the next topic? So does that cover it? But the reason why housing is important is so that way you don't spend a twelve thousand dollar as soon as you get here, and that's yeah. exactly what we did. So twelve thousand yeah. dollars is a lot of money. It's a big chunk, mm -hmm. um, especially like let's say you're you saved up twenty k, because like twenty k maybe feels right, you know? Yeah, because like, that's a million. That's a million peso. Yeah. Well, and also like twenty k feels like a, a substantial amount of money in the states too. Like you know, you're like, okay, I've got twenty k, I've saved up. You know, like you're feeling all right. Like you could go to Disneyland. You know, like that kind of thing. 
Um, and so if you're going to the Philippines with a million peso, then it would feel like you'd be fine, you know, like, but here's the thing. If you're, if you're spending half of it in the first month you're here, that can be a big shock. You know, and then you're like, whoa, 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 wait a second. Maybe we don't, you know, we don't have enough saved. So who knows? Oh, thank you. So, yeah, save some money and then have a, a stream of income coming here, whether it's your pension, hey, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it, you need to have some kind of income. It could be your social security, um, your, uh, I don't know what, what, because we're not, we don't have social security yet, but one day, one day. One day, one day. But we do have our military um, stuff, so that's cool. And then, um, you know, other ways of, because of, we're, we're educated, so we can do stuff. And you're online. educated? I'm educated. educated. I can do things online. Oh, uh, okay. All right, cool. All right, what else? Um, what else is there? What else is there? Um, I was going to talk about buying your tickets a year oh, out. Oh, dude. That was one of, probably one of the smartest things, right? So we were looking it up on the internet today. And if you buy, we bought our tickets one year out, and it cost us $500 each, each person. person. So 500 for her, 500. That's very inexpensive. It's two grand. So we just looked it up right now. And if you bought it a year out, just like we did, it is around $2,000. One yeah, way trip. For four people. For four people. One way trip for four people. And that has eight bags, okay? Yeah, eight bags. Underneath, underneath the plane, okay? But uh, the cheapest one is, is 1,900 and some change, 990 something. And that's with China Air. Well, Philippine uh, Airlines we is like 2,500. Yeah, Philippine National Airlines, we did a, a straight flight. And um, when you're buying your ticket, this is really important, okay? I got to give you some advice, all right? Take my advice. <laughs> she doesn't use it. I'm yeah. giving it out. No, no. <laughs> get, get here either in the evening or early morning. So you want to get here when the sun is down because it's still effing hot, okay? Doesn't matter if you get here at 4 a.m., by the time you're leaving the airport, it's 6 a.m., and it's already hot. It depends on what when of the year. Sure. All year long, Manila, concrete jungle, hot. <laughs> okay. But what the other thing to think about is traffic. So you're going to hit that early morning traffic. Doesn't matter. So you want to come here when the sun is down. If you were to come here at like 11 p.m. at night and you're landing, um, you're probably going to get out of the airport around, it takes two hours to get through the airport. It just does. And to get all your bags and then find your, your ride, um, come, come here when the sun is down. So it's the coolest part of the day. And also when there's no traffic, like less traffic, cause there's still traffic 24 hours, but there's less traffic in the nighttime. And that's my advice. My advice, just get here. Just don't even worry about all that stuff. Nighttime, daytime, just get here. But she has a valid point. She does. And that point is that, hey, there it is again. <laughs> uh, and that and that point is that when you get here, there's going to be a lot of traffic, especially if you come out of uh, Manila. Now, there is another option, which is Clark. Clark International Airport would be a lot better because it's a lot less traffic. It's not as traffic's not as congested, and um, but it's just a little bit more pricey. We like going to Manila. Um, initially, our initial plan was that we were going to stay in Manila and kind of enjoy it, go to Mall of Asia and all those things. But we decided that we just, you know what, we'll just come here to the province. Um, so that way we can start kind of getting the kids to school. Um, and then that's something else, too, that you might want to prioritize is like, all right, what do we need for school? That's, all, that's another one. What, what do we need for school? Um, if you're bringing a family and you have school age kids and you want them to go to either the public school or the private school, they will need their last report card. So you do need to get their last printout for their report card. Uh, they really care about that. You also need to have their birth certificates, their passports. Um, you want to get a copies, have copies of that because here to make a copy of any document it's kind of like it's 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 actually a grueling process if you don't have your own printer you got to go around trying to find like 
like the Kinkos, right? But it's actually Xerox. And so you, when you go place, you say, oh, hey, can I get a copy of this? And they're like, they look at you like you don't know what you're talking about or they don't know what you're talking about. And you say like, I need this Xerox, okay? And um, <laughs> and their, their machine is like an inkjet printer uh, from Walmart. Yeah. Okay? It's, it's not a laser printer. No. It's not a copy machine, industrialized copy machine. No. In fact, we tried looking for a laser printer and we couldn't find any. Yeah, not yet, but we've got to go to to Manila. Maybe we'll find it in Manila. But yeah, the make sure you have copies of everything that you need, and so that way you're not like struggling trying to find copies so you can get your kids into school because they will take your originals. So like you need to your original copies. So like you you'd be like, oh this uh, no this is my original. I need this, and then you got to go make copies and then come back. So don't you know? Um, so that's what you need. What else? I don't know. That's you're asking me about the school. Yes, but anything else on the topic? Uh, when we talked about the tickets, yeah, uh, you said buying the tickets a year out a year is out. a good idea. Buy the tickets a year out. Okay, mm -hmm. plan it out. Buy it a year out. It's gonna be a lot cheaper. Backwards plan. Backwards plan. You're gonna save thousands. Uh, and the that. time is gonna buy come by so quickly. Like when we bought our tickets, I was like, I'm never making it to August. Like it's forever far away. And before you knew it, it was like, it was there. We were, it was time to go mm -hmm. and I didn't have enough time. And I'm like scrounging and trying to get out of there, get to the airport. And like, we forgot so many things. We left so many loose ends and it was just like, but we had a whole year to plan. It was, it was crazy. Yeah, it was. But uh, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, okay. For the for the hour session. Yes, for yeah. now. I think this is that's pretty much it for now. We have a little bit more topics that we can uh, discuss uh, on the next slide. But yeah. for now, that's it. <laughs> Our kids are getting out of school early oh, yeah, today, we go. so we yeah. gotta go we'll again. Come, we'll come oh. back and we'll talk about visas. All right, and one way tickets. Take care. Bye. Bye.